What is going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. I'm your host, Derek Larger. Joining me, my guy, Zach Boyd from the No Horsing Around podcast. Zach, I know I tried to get you on the other day, uh, but glad to finally get you on today for not only one, but two episodes. So I greatly appreciate that. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good, man. Excited about this. It's an exciting time uh, for the year. I think all Colts fans and all Colts nerds in general Really enjoy this part of the season, seeing who's going to actually make this football team. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, you know, this is that – this is the week, right? This is the yeah. week slash weekend where, you know, a lot of players' dreams will be finally met or finally come to an end. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a quick reality check for a lot of guys in this league that, you know, what is it, 30 guys from every roster – So you're talking about it, you know, around eight to 900 players are going to find themselves being cut this week. And that is going to definitely be uh, something to monitor for all these guys. And we have to talk about it with this one because, you know, there's a couple guys that we know uh, that could get cut and we're going to discuss our 53 man here soon as well. But I mean, just based off without going into any names, I mean, do you think that be, because of this new coaching staff and the way they're looking at this offense and what it could potentially become, especially the offense, do you think that there could be a surprise cut on the offensive side of the ball that some people may not really be looking at? Yeah, I mean, obviously you mentioned the new coaching staff. There's never that true allegiance, right? When, you, when you're a part of a new regime, a new coaching staff, you don't have as many ties uh, to the older players as as maybe a, you know a veteran coach would have had. I think one position, and we've beat this drum for a while now, Derek. So I don't think this is going to be any any shocker for anybody who's listened to either our content or your content. Mo Ali Cox for me. I mean, if if we're going to talk about a guy that I would be looking at, um, I'm not saying that I I want him cut, but I think if I were going to look on the offensive side, Mo Ali Cox just hasn't been healthy really this whole training camp, and you've got a lot of youth in that room, you know, and a lot of really good route runners and pass catchers, more of your modern hybrid type of tight ends, and I'm just not so sure that he survives this uh, first round of 53. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, I think that's the one that everyone is gripping onto because of this new coaching staff and how they like to run their offense, especially with more high speed, athletic, you know, type of guys. And it's not as much reliant upon the run game anymore as it once was with this former coaching staff and Frank Reich who, you know, like to run the football through Jonathan Taylor or Marlon Mack. And it was more set up that way uh, yeah. because now you have a mobile quarterback that can do a lot more of that for you. There's a lot more RPOs. There's a lot more other things that utilize other guys skill sets in that relation to that. I will, we might as well just stay on the tight end topic here for a second. Obviously, like I said, we'll do our 53 man later on, but if you had to pick and we're presuming that the Colts are probably going to take four tight ends at some point, who do you think is going to be the four tight ends that this coaching staff goes with? Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, Jelani Woods, I know he's also been injured, but I just think there's too much raw talent. Um, I see him kind of being designated in that Dallas Goddard role that Shane Steichen used in Philadelphia um, he'll be your primary pass catcher when he's back on the field. Um, probably can provide you a little bit of inline blocking as well. But then, I, you know, I think they're super high on Will Mallory. Obviously, against the Eagles, he had a couple really nice catches and runs. Colin Granson is is really – he's been the only healthy, true tight end that we've had this whole training camp, and he's earned himself a spot on this football team, in my opinion, no doubt about it. Um, and then to round that out, you know – I think I would go with Ogletree. I think they're going to bet on upside. A young football team where they're not necessarily in win-now mode, um, I think they're betting on upside and they're betting on hitting on one of these young guys to pair up and go along with Jelani Woods. So that would be my four. Jelani Woods, Colin Granson, Will Mallory, and then Drew Ogletree. I think that is the golden four that everyone keeps going back to for sure. 
uh, going forward with the rest of this, um, I don't really think I can't even tell you if I think that there's anyone that gets the boot offensive line wise, because I think we're so thin tight as it is. Yeah. You can't afford to cut any of these guys. Like as bad as some of them might be, you can't afford to cut any of them. Now, maybe that maybe there is a situation where they maybe do. And then, like you said, when I said that there's a t- hundreds of guys that are going to get cut in the next three days, I mean, there's going to be a lot of offensive linemen that yeah. you have the options to now choose from. So that'll be interesting. Uh, do you think that there might be a surprise cut in the running back room potentially? For me, no. I'm, I'm more of a wait and see right now because I've been on the side of the fence, and I know there's just tons of rumors swirling around. I just think ultimately Jonathan Taylor's not going to get traded by Tuesday. Um, that doesn't mean he's not going to get traded at all, but by that Tuesday mandate, I don't think it happens. Um, and for that reason – I think you're kind of lumped in here with four guys. So I, I can't see anything happening. But I do – I would say this, though, Derek, the caveat would be this would be one of the three positions that I think that they're going to actively potentially look for an upgrade at, at, at this position. You mentioned offensive line earlier, and all of those players are going to get cut. I, I would almost bet you that one of those players that get cut are going to get picked up by the Indianapolis Colts because we need depth at the offensive line as well as running back, I mean, you could you could stand to have an upgrade because if you start off, and let's just say hypothetically, you know, we go with Taylor, Hull, Jackson, uh, you know, and then and then we would route it out with Moss. We got a guy coming off of a broken arm. You got a guy who doesn't necessarily want to play football. So now you're down to two running backs. I don't know how comfortable Shane Sykin and Chris Ballard would be with that. Um, so for me, I guess no surprise cuts, really. Um, I'm curious your thoughts. Um as far as that goes, I think I probably, I don't know if it would be a total blow away surprise. I think I probably have a little bit more of a surprise at wide receiver um, than I would be at running back. Um, Yeah. So when I look at this group, I mean, one way or another, Jonathan Taylor is still on the PUP. So yeah. his roster spot technically doesn't count right now. So I don't know. Do the, Colts go with four running backs. I would presume they would. Um, because I mean, even with it, you'd still have to worry about injury and things of that nature. I mean, we know Zach Moss when he gets back is going to be the starter. Yeah. Um, and I think me personally, after everything you've seen from Evan Hall and everything else from the last game, especially, And what you've seen in training camp, I think he has too much of a unique skill set to let him go walking. So I ask you, like, that leaves you with, I mean, after, if Jonathan Taylor comes back and he ends up taking a spot, then that leaves either Deion Jackson or Kenyon Drake to get the boot. And, I mean, who... Who do the Indianapolis Colts go with? And I mean, it comes down to do the Indianapolis Colts think they can get more out of Kenyon Drake down the road if indeed a couple other guys get injured or do they just go with Deion Jackson who's been in the system longer? I don't know. That's, but that's going to be the interesting one. Who in the running back room is going to get caught? Because if Jonathan Taylor comes back, it may not happen this week. Because Jonathan Taylor is going to be on the PUP, so they still have to sign four of these guys. And it would not surprise me if Zach Moss, Deion Jackson, Evan Hall, and Kenyon Drake are all signed for this week. But at some point, if Taylor comes back, one of them is going to get kicked out. And it's going to be interesting to see who they do that to. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Uh it's a very hard position to predict because we just don't know. You know, all these other positions, for the most part, you really do know. Um, but with the Jonathan Taylor situation, you're kind of in a in a in a at hold pause stance. Um, if he comes back, obviously he's clearly he's your number one. You've got him and Zach Moss. Now, last year Chris Ballard went with three running backs. That's pretty thin at running back. Um, this year, because of the injury situation and, and things that have happened, I would predict they'll keep four. Um, and I just don't know that Kenyon Drake is going to end up making the team personally. Um, 
But if you want that veteran, that steadiness, we all saw that that touchdown that he caught against the Eagles. That didn't. That certainly didn't hurt his stock. Um, we'll see, man. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see what they do at, at that running back position. And I think there's going to be a lot of movement once this, you know, cut down comes on Tuesday. You could you could see them maybe going out and getting another person, or there might be a trade. So Jonathan Taylor's not even a part of this roster. Or he comes back and he says, you know what, I'm just ready to play football. So there's there's so many different moving parts. So it's very fluid at the running back position. Absolutely. So now we move to the defensive side. Um, I was trying to say that I thought that there was going to be some like special uh, guy that's going to get uh, cut in the secondary. But then again, it's all so young and – we know that Chris Lamons is going to get suspended for the first couple games of the season. Honestly, he might end up just getting cut anyway because they know what's coming with him. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't think there's anyone from the secondary perspective that I think gets cut. That's surprising me. Uh, maybe <clears throat> potentially, you know, Tony Brown gets placed back on the, uh, on the practice squad. There's, I'm going to throw this one at you because I think that there's one guy that could potentially get the boo potentially. Now I, I love this player. He's from a school that I love and represent, but at the same time I think about it. And again, going back to the same argument that we had with the new coaching staff and the way the defensive yeah. line kind of moves around a lot. Yeah. Could go in his favor, but it could also mean that he doesn't excel enough at one. And I think that might be Taekwon Lewis. Hmm. Now, I mean, hear me out. I know he's getting on veteran minimum, but the majority of the guys that you have on this defensive line are all young. You've had to continuously pay Taekwon Lewis a low amount of money because he continues to be hurt. He was even hurt at the very start of training camp. You have Titus Leo who showed you, you know, a few flashes here and there in preseason. Yeah. You have Al-Qudi Muhammad still back on the roster. You have Dio Adangbo who can play both in and out. So I look at it and I just think to myself, there might be a defensive lineman who might potentially take Taekwon's spot for the sake of getting a young guy in there versus Taekwon Lewis, who you can't really trust to stay healthy. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, as I was kind of etching this out uh, with my final 53, I did have Lewis on the final 53, so I hadn't really thought about that. You know, you make some really good, valid points. I think I probably would, if it were me, and, and I'd stay on the defensive line. I think Taven Bryan is probably not going to – I think he'll get cut. Uh, he just hasn't really done much. He's just a guy, you know? Like, like he just – He's not a bad football player. He's not a great football player. Nothing he's done for me and for my eyes has been out there, and he's not really flashed or popped. Um, and I, I would think, to me, um, of the veterans, he would be the most expendable, um, and they might take a chance on a younger guy, you know, in that mix as well. I, I do like this, though. I do like the fact that Tycon Lewis – does have a little bit of experience kicking it to the outside. Although I think I much prefer him on the inside. He could go over in a pinch. You know, you have an injury in the middle of a football game. That being said, he's got his own set of problems with being injured over his career. I mean, the very reason he keeps signing these one-year rental deals is because he just can't stay healthy, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I hadn't really thought about that. That's a kind of a fascinating thing. Um, I'm trying to, as we're speaking here in real time, let that sink in, the, the idea of him getting cut. And I guess I probably would lean Taylon Bryan in this instance, um, but it, it, it makes total sense, man. I mean, it makes total sense. And, you know, this young coach and Chris Ballard, they're going to want to give these young guys an opportunity. So if they were going to take a chance, I probably wouldn't be surprised if either one of them ended up not making it through that first that first initial cut. Gotcha. Well, outside of that, my dude, I don't really have anyone else. Do you have anyone else that you've been looking at that might be? You know, I think the only other player, I mean, to flip it back on offense, I think I, I think Michael Strawn might not make this football team. 
Okay. He's not a star, but I mean, he's been a training camp star, you know, the last couple of years. A guy who's <laughs> often injured. Uh, that's a guy I think I but didn't have good, him on my final 53. That's a good point, though, because I mean, you look at, I mean, I know he's second behind Alec Pierce in the in the Y category, but like, what has he done this right. offseason, though? I mean, you look at Dwan Winfrey, who, you know, has excelled in preseason games. Yeah. DJ Montgomery's had a couple. I mean, James Washington even had one. I mean, I haven't seen Mike Strong make a catch at all in any of these preseason games. And we already know Mike Strong doesn't want to play special teams. Yeah. So, I mean, it's you're kind of at a loss. And especially when you got a wide receiver that might play special teams to stay on this roster and say, hey, I want to be the fifth or sixth wide receiver. I'll gladly take that that role if that means I get to stay on this roster some guy will and I mean who is that guy I have no idea but that that could make sense and also I mean on top of it all I I don't I, it would not surprise me if Amari Rogers makes this roster I mean I've I know that he's had his issues in the past but he's shown a lot of great stuff uh since coming to Indianapolis just a mere two weeks ago yeah. and He's helped in a lot of different ways, and I think he actually has a better skill set and better uh, usage than Mike Strong would. Yeah, uh, so I, I think he would stay on it. Yeah, no, I agree, and and, and it's funny you said that because I was down to two people. I was down to Winfrey or Rogers to make that fifth spot for the wide receiver when I was putting it together, and ultimately. What kicked Mike Strawn out of that equation of those three people is he's the one guy that doesn't have experience on special teams. You lose you lose Ashton Doolin, which is a major loss in the special teams department. You got to have somebody on that wide receiver group, you know, to be able to fit fit in, who's willing to play special teams. And I, I guess I went with Winfrey because he's a little bit bigger body. You've already got two smaller guys in McKenzie and Downs. I know I might like that bigger body in case an injury happens to to a Alec Pierce or a Michael Pittman Jr. But really, you know, him and Amari Rogers flip a coin and close your eyes, basically. You know, when it comes yeah. down to that part of it. So true. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it, guys, for this one. This is us talking a little bit about some of the cuts that might happen this week. Uh, be sure to keep an eye out for all the updates. Thank you, guys, so much for tuning in. Great. Greatly appreciate all the support. And as always, guys, go Colts.